From awaiting execution to awaiting a parole hearing, a convicted Alabama killer is getting the chance to walk free, but her young victim's family is fighting to keep her behind bars forever. I met with the Milliken family at Little River Canyon, the scene of the crime. It's, it's very hard knowing what happened here. And it's, it's cringeworthy. 13-year-old Lisa Ann Milliken was kidnapped from a mall in Rome, Georgia in 1982 by Judith Ann Neely. I mean, Judith Neely was actually only four years older than my sister. My sister was 13, she was 17. Judith brought Lisa to the Five Points Motel in Scottsboro where she was kept in room 12 for multiple days. Judith tortured and restrained Lisa while Judith's husband, Alvin, raped her. Judith said in court that Alvin forced her to commit these crimes, but investigators of the case told us they had no doubt that Judith was the ringleader. She's not a good person, you know, she's really not. And she tries to put everything off on her husband, Alvin. Well, you know, I've heard through the grapevine that it wasn't Alvin, it was her. She's the one that was in charge of everything, you know. From the hotel, Judith drove Lisa to Little River Canyon in Fort Payne, where she injected her multiple times with Drano. When Judith noticed it wasn't killing her, she did what she came to do and took Lisa Ann's life. Judith shot her in the back, hoping that when she shot her in the back, she would fall forward, but instead Lisa fell backwards. This is what remains of the spot where Lisa Ann was handcuffed. And then she was shot and pushed off into this canyon. She was tortured, you know, kidnapped, tortured, shot up Drano, you know, and that right there, you know, that's gotta you know, be bad, you know. She was, you know, a lot of things happened to her. I really don't want to go into details on, but you know, it should never happen, you know. This interview was her brother's first time at the site of his big sister's murder because it brings back painful memories like the day police found Lisa's body. And then it comes out, you know, that she was killed, you know, right here at the spot. Judith Neely was actually the one who called police and gave the location of Lisa's body. Judith was very vocal about what she did. She has no remorse for what she did. Two weeks after Lisa's death, Judith and Alvin Neely were arrested in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and Judith Neely was given the death sentence. But in 1999, Governor Fob James commuted her sentence to life and gave no reason. And the governor should have never, you know, commuted her sentence, you know, he should have let happen what the what she was sentenced, you know. Now after 35 years of prison, legal battles, and loopholes, Judith Ann Neely has gone from death row to now being granted a parole hearing. It's disrespectful in Lisa's name and in Lisa's memory that she thinks she, she's entitled to a parole hearing. You don't get to take an entire life from a 13 year old and think you have a right to get out and walk among civilized human beings. She shouldn't be getting out on parole. She should have got her death sentence, but since she can't, she should stay in there until her dying days. Judith's husband, Alvin Neely, died in prison in 2005 during his life sentence. The Millikens and investigators still say, despite what Judith says, that she was the aggressor and controlled Alvin. So to hear that she was forced by anyone other than her own self and her own demons is a lie. And it's a spit in her face. She did it alone. Oh, she's the one carried the gun. She's the one that did everything. She's the one that brought my sister out here. She didn't have to kill her. She could have let her go. With the parole hearing just days away, the Millikens are still fighting to keep Judith behind bars and want the public to help. Letting the parole board know that we're against it matters. You know, every letter that you write helps. Now, 35 years after Lisa's death, the Milliken family says they will continue to fight for Lisa and remember her as the little girl and big sister who was full of life and love. She's never going to be forgotten. We reached out to Judith Neely for comment but did not hear back. Her parole hearing is set for this Wednesday in Montgomery. Tomorrow night we will share the story of a man who was shot by Neely just a week after the murder of Lisa Ann Milliken.